Resizable bar and hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Both of these features were released to help improve performance of your system in 3D applications. We've tested both of these features separately, but what if you were to use both of them together? Could it possibly impact performance in a meaningful way? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. In this video, I'll be showing you guys some benchmarks which I conducted to see the performance impacts of using both resizable bar and hardware accelerated GPU scheduling together. Recently, I tested resizable bar using an NVIDIA RTX 3090 and found that for the most part, it didn't drastically improve performance in games. Not as much as I hoped it would. There were some performance uplifts seen and there was also some performance regression noted in some games too. So if you're interested in that video and want to learn more about Resizable Bar, definitely check it out. I tested 20 games there at 3 different resolutions. Link for it will be in the video description. When it came to hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, also known as HAGS, unfortunately we found that it hardly impacted performance. The results showed us that whether HAGS was on or off, performance was within margin of error. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The other interesting experience I had with it enabled was that it caused F1 2018 to just flat out not work. I also did hear some reports from other users through various forums that it also caused similar issues with other titles. Now since then, I haven't retested HAGS in F1 2018. Maybe it got fixed by an update, but if anyone else knows, hey, let me know in the comments. So we've used both of these features, and I think I can speak for most people when I say it's nice to have some free performance, but as of now, both of these features when used separately aren't giving you any sort of substantial performance uplifts to the point where somebody running older gen hardware could be compelled to run out and upgrade their CPU or motherboard and GPU to enable resizable bar or enable HAGS. However, what if you were to use both resizable bar and HAGS in tandem with each other? Could the performance benefits perhaps stack and allow the user to gain even more performance out of their system? To test this, I used the same test bench which I had used to test resizable bar. The system has an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X 8 core CPU, which is cooled by a Corsair H159i Pro XT 280mm AIO. For the RAM, we've got four 8GB sticks of Patriot Viper Steel memory running at 3600MHz with tuned CL14 timings. The the motherboard is an MSI X570 Unify. The graphics card we're using is an Asus ROG Strix RTX 3090. For our storage device, we've got a 2TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe SSD. Powering all the components is an EVGA 1000 G3 80 Plus Gold Certified Power Supply. For this set of benchmarks, I decided to just stick with one resolution, which was 1440p, as the results will show you guys that there really wasn't any need to do any extra benchmarks. You'll see the performance differences will be realized just after going through a few of the benchmarks, and we'll get through them fairly quickly because of that. Also, keep in mind we're not worried about raw FPS figures, but more so the relative differences between the different configurations. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at our first game, which is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Here we can see that nothing has changed across all three configurations, regardless of BAR and HAGS being ena enabled together. In Forza Horizon 4, we see a 2% increase over stock, even though our 1% lows did decrease a bit, I'd say it's still within margin of error. Then with resizable bar and HAGS enabled together, we see a further 4% increase to the average FPS over stock. Gears 5 is next, and just as we saw in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, performance between all three configurations is almost the same, so let's move on. Horizon Zero Dawn is next, and here we're seeing that stock and resizable bar offer the same performance. Then with HAGS enabled, we see the average FPS increased by a 3% margin over stock, so I'd say it's mostly just HAGS which is providing us the best performance benefit here. In Borderlands 3, we're seeing that resizable bar is what gave us the biggest performance improvement, an 8% increase for the average FPS, but the 1% low stayed around the same. Then with HAGS enabled, we see an additional 3% increase to the average FPS, but our 1% lows did drop by 8% as well, though it's not a huge loss. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, our best results come from having resizable bar enabled, which provided a 7% increase over stock for the average FPS, while having it enabled with HAGS provided only a 5% increase. In Control, we can see that this title is among those which shows a larger benefit with HAGS enabled. Here we're looking at a 5% increase with both resizable bar and HAGS enabled. 
Next up, we have Red Dead Redemption 2, and this game really doesn't care about you having resizable bar enabled and HAGS. It barely improved over stock as well, implying this game just simply isn't taking advantage of those features or there's some other limitation elsewhere. Cyberpunk 2077 benefits from having both resizable bar and HAGS enabled. Here we have a 6% and 7% improvement for the average FPS and 1% lows respectively, so that's pretty decent. This is one of those titles that players are looking for ways to optimize in any way possible, as it's so demanding so you should see the benefit of running with this configuration. The last title we'll take a look at is CSGO. Here with Resizable Bar, we did notice a bit of performance regression for the average FPS at 11 FPS, and then with HAGS enabled, we see more performance regression, a loss of almost 20 FPS average or almost 3%. But when you're playing at above 700 FPS average, the losses can be considered negligible at this point. When we take a look at our 10 game average, we can see that our configuration with Resizable Bar and HAGS enabled together does come out on top, but we're only looking at a mere 1% improvement, so it's really nothing to write home about. Like I said in my previous video, I'm not going to be discounting these features as it really doesn't cost you anything extra to enable them, and granted you have the hardware to support it. All this tells me is that right now these features are still in their infancy. We'll have to see more driver optimizations from Nvidia, perhaps even Microsoft will release some updates in Windows to help increase HAGS performance, and since these features are still technically new, there's work to be done on the development side of things for games. So I don't think the full potential of these features has been seen just yet. So I am really looking forward to seeing how things play out in the future, but that will do it for this benchmarking video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Check out the video description for my other videos and ways to support the channel. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.